job. Praise God. Amen. That's right, Brother Eli. Amen. I want to just look at the Word of God for a few minutes. And uh, we're doing our best to take care of ourselves and trust the Lord. So, but uh, I'm going won't be real long tonight just because my ears are popping and ringing. My head feels like it's an advice. Amen. But we're just trusting the Lord to help us. Amen. And, uh, to touch and heal. I don't say that to complain. It's just the way it is. But I know that the Lord's faithful. Amen. He's going to see us through. Amen. Praise God. One thing that I think is interesting in our lives is thinking about something that is fascinating. Has anyone, can you think of something that fascinates you? Like you're fascinated by um, maybe a particular uh, site that you see, maybe there's a place that you like to go, fascinated by uh, uh, Niagara Falls, the, the magnitude of Niagara Falls. And you know, I think folks are fascinated when they see the Grand Canyon, they look and they're fascinated by that. Um, someone recently showed me there was a, 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 a talent show on television. I'm not promoting this. I'm just simply saying I was fascinated by the autistic boy who couldn't talk well, and uh, but sang, sat down at the piano and played and sang. Maybe some of you saw that the fascination of things. That, you look, and, and I think that oftentimes that some of those particular talent shows will will allow you to see that fascinated uh, by by those things. Uh, but I, I want to uh, just ask you this this evening, Amen. Uh, have you recently, and are you perpetually fascinated by God? Fascinated by God. Where you look and you see the wonder of who He is. Amen. The wonder of who He is. The greatness. Amen. And we may be uh, drawn to see things that fascinate us, particularly in nature. Fascinated by seeing animals. Fascinated by seeing Niagara Falls, the Grand Canyon. Amen. But, but I believe that all these things that we see really are directive to get us to direct towards something that's even more fascinating than those things that catch our eye and that we are fascinated by God. Amen. Fascinated by God because He is great and He's greatly to be praised. Amen. Psalms chapter number 90, the Word of God says, Lord, Thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or, or, ever, uh, or ever Thou hast formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Can I ever say that again? From everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Amen. That's magnificent to think about in itself. I'll talk about it in a little bit. But from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He said, Thou turnest man to destruction and say, Return ye to the children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are, as, are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Amen. He says, a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. Amen. We look back over our life and we realize that time goes quickly. And folks will tell you, the older you go, uh, you get the quicker time will go. But when you think of the ancient of days, when you think of God, and He thinks of, of a thousand years ago, Brother Doug, He views it as yesterday. Are you fascinated by God tonight? Are you fascinated? 
Moses' prayer, and this is a psalm uh, you'll read there in Psalms 90. If you have any type of heading in your Bible, you'll read that this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. This isn't a prayer that when Moses is, is in the halls of Pharaoh, but it's when he is in the wilderness, he made this his prayer. He said, Lord, you're our dwelling place, and, and not mine only, but you're the dwelling place of all men throughout history. You are the dwelling place from generation to generation. He says, before the earth was, before the mountains were, before the skies and the stars, everything was. God, you were. Amen. I saw from the vantage point that you have. Uh, God, you see everything. But from my vantage point, I only see from horizon to horizon. <coughs> but you, God. You see it all. You see it all. Think about it. God who loves us, seen before time was, and He sees till after time. I want you to wrap your mind around this this evening. That when God Himself robed Himself in flesh, He didn't look down, Sister Dot, and say, I want to go where there's microwaves and airplanes and high-speed internet. He said, I want to go right when men's heart are right and it's necessary for me to give my only begotten son. Wow. Are you fascinated by God? Amen. The fascination of who He is. And then he says in verse number 3, read this. He says, Thou turnest man to destruction. Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden, it was their choice. They made the choice. And they walked, Brother Justin, down the road of destruction. But the Bible says, Thou turnest man to destruction and savest. And savest, Brother Doug. The Bible says, return ye children of men. Amen. Here it is. He said, you go down the road of destruction. Amen. But I turn you to the road of everlasting life. Amen. Follow everlasting life. Talk about being fascinated by God. Amen. He could have left us dying on our own. Amen. But He said, I'm giving you a fork in the road that you can take a turn down the road of everlasting life. Talk about being fascinated. We should be fascinated by God. C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, if you would take a piece of paper and you would stretch it as far as your eye could see, and then you would draw a little line about three centimeters or one inch, he said that piece of paper would represent, the one inch would represent time, and the rest of it would represent eternity, the vastness of God. Amen. We think that we've been around forever. We think man's been here forever. Brother Lynn, it's just a little line on the whole scheme of things in life. God has been from everlasting to everlasting. We only get the vantage point of seeing from horizon to horizon. But God sees, amen, with no limits. Talk about an awesome God. Are you fascinated by God? God's more, more, God's more vast than we give Him credit for. You see, the problem with our lives is we fall under two bad things. And I'll call them sin. Brother John, you know what those two things are that most of us, if not all of us, are guilty of? Number one, we overestimate self. And number two, we underestimate God. Can I say it again? We overestimate self. And we underestimate God. And so we think that we're real important and we underestimate the importance of God. I need to tell you that one thing that I have learned is people like to take the metaphor of who we are and make God who we are. They like to make God like man. But God, though He became a man, is nothing like man. 
Amen. God made us in His image. But we think that in return, we need to do Him a favor and make God in our image. Hello? Oh, well, I get mad. God must get mad. I have a short fuse. God must have a short fuse. Amen. <coughs> I, I, I'm an introvert, so God must be an introvert. I'm an extrovert, so God must be an extrovert. We take God and, 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 and we overestimate self and we make God like us. Amen. Romans 1 talks about taking the glorious God, amen, and making Him into the corruptible image of man, amen. That is talking about the idol worshipers, the adulterers, amen. I think we fall into that too many times. We may not bow down to an image or statue, but we make God like us, the glorious God who should be fascinated and worshipped and reverenced and trusted, amen, but all too many times we bring God down to our level. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Moses, when he looked at God, he saw a God who transcended generations. A God whose existence was pre-existent before the mountains. We look at the mountains and we're magnificent. We look at things that have been there from generation to generation. But we forget before this, there was God. There was God. A fascination of God. Amen. Someone who's higher. The Word of God reminds us that His ways are not my ways or your ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. But the Word of God says they are higher. So when you think that you have a good way, God has a higher, better way. Amen. When we begin to think about ourselves and it's exalted as we can make ourselves, understanding that God is greater. Paul prayed for the Ephesians church that they would be uh, uh, empowered uh, by this transcendent God. Amen. A God that they would fall in love with who was just too great to fully understand. Listen, we may be students of the Word of God. We may know God. But we'll never fully understand God until we're with Him in eternity. God, why do you allow this? God, why did this happen? You know, there's some things that we're not going to understand until we get to heaven. By and by, we'll understand it better by and by. Do you trust Him? Even when you don't understand and you're fascinated by Him, a God who's so marvelous and great, it's easy for us in our lives to become stuck and stagnant for us to trip and fall in faith. Something happens that we don't understand. Prayers aren't answered. Disappointed in people. Our expectation of people or God is, is not represented the way that we think that we sh it should be. And all of a sudden, we stumble when we should be fascinated. By God is so great. I believe that God is, is, is bidding us to come out and quit uh, overestimating our importance and underestimating His importance. And He asks us to trust Him today. Amen. A God who is always there. A God who never changes. Amen. When we think about this God, a uh, purifying God, a God who, who, who the psalmist says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Amen. Can we get rid of the dross of ourselves? Amen. And get a better viewpoint of God. Sometimes we need to take off the glasses of humanity that we look through. Amen. And look at the magnitude of who God is and be fascinated by Him. Amen. A God who is nothing short of amazing. Amen. His name is still wonderful. He's still God of heaven and earth. Amen. And every knee should still bow and worship Him. Amen. There is no one like Him. 
Amen. Amen. God asks this question in Isaiah 40. He says, to whom then will you liken me or, or that, that I should be as equal? There is none on the uh, uh, to, uh, uh, none to, to the left uh, or to the right of him. Amen. There is none this evening that is his counterpart. There is no one like God. Sometimes we try to put people in relationships and things in the position of God. Amen. But there's no one like God tonight. Amen. Being fascinated by Him. I said that He is higher. Amen. Call it what you want, but this God is above everything. He's above cancer. He's above diabetes. Amen. He's above any type of uh, 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 disorder that we have in our body, whether it be our heart, whether it be uh, 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 our, our, our renal system, whether it be our mind, whatever it is, God is higher tonight. God is greater. How many of you have ever thought about Paul on the road to Damascus? And he has this eye-opening experience. And I'm certainly not bringing... Uh, any glory to the fact that he persecuted Christians and you know to even think about that uh, how, how it just uh, our hearts doesn't relish that but I think that each one of us should celebrate the Damascus Road experience and we need to have it often in our lives because I want you to think about something we think about Paul and this experience and on the road to Damascus, Buddha, he doesn't think that he's this terrible guy. In fact, he has learned that at the feet of Gamaliel, and he's been he's been trained, Brother Justin. He's been taught. He knows Brother Rick. I mean, he knows the Word of God. He's he's been educated in such a great way. He thought he knew all there was about God. And then all of a sudden, he's blinded. But the scales are dropped off of his eyes. There's a few things that I look at him and, and I see. You see, he was fighting against this ideology that this man had come incarnate in the flesh and claimed to be the incarnation of God. It went against everything that he thought. He fought against it. He persecuted the Christians. He killed them because of this. And so he felt like he needed to defend God. And so in his defense of God, he was killing Christians. And, and, and all of a sudden, he said, Who art thou? And he says, Jesus. And later we find him calling him the Lord. He had this relationship with Jesus. Sometimes in our lives, we are stuck just trying to defend God, trying to defend the Word of God, trying to defend the church. Amen. I think that we need to have a Damascus Road experience. Amen. Where we're simply fascinated by God. Where we don't have to give God a defense. Where we don't feel like we always have to be looking for an answer. But where we're simply fascinated by God. And when we fall in love with Jesus so much that we call Him Lord, then all of a sudden our life doesn't need to be a defense of God, but our fascination becomes the testimony to everybody that this is God. This is who He is. I trust Him. I relish Him and His greatness. A Damascus Road experience. Fascinated by God. Have you had an experience where you're just fascinated by God? Hey Amen. <coughs> Paul, he comes and he talks about, let me show you the unknown God. I know Him. I'm fascinated by Him. The world has lots of things that they wish and they hope and they serve. But the greatest testimony I believe is men and women who are fascinated by God to reveal an unknown God to them. This is what you're really looking for. This is answers. This is peace. Let me tell you about Jesus. I'm fascinated by him. Can I share him with you? Peter said, For we have not followed cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Let me ask you something. Have you been an eyewitness of the majesty of God? That you're fascinated by him. But Eli, you know why you don't have to fear? Because you're fascinated by God. And the fascination of God overrides any type of fear 
that you and I may go through. If Sister Beth would come to the piano tonight, I just simply want to ask you this question. Are you fascinated by God? One thing I love about Bella and Brilliant is this learning thing that they're going through and their fascination. It's really fun. It's really unique to them. Yesterday, I was just mowing my grass. Had to be done. It was getting hot. All of a sudden, this little blonde may come out. She uh, stopped the bow and I put her on my lap. No great, she sat there until it stopped. I heard her going for a bath. You know, I was just fascinated by this equipment that drives and mows the grass. Fascination is nothing to us. They're fascinated by the littlest things in life. God, never let our fascination be diminished. We think our life experience from the Doug has taught us everything, Sister Stacy. But we only see from horizon to horizon that this God on earth, He sees the movement of millions of people, billions of people around the globe. He sees the blood of my eye of halfway around the world in the Philippines. He sees the blink of every Filipino's eyes, from the youngest to the oldest, from the happiest to the most sorrowful. What a fascination of God that he's got. God doesn't need us for his existence. Brother, Brother Rick, he could have let us die and go to hell. But he said, I want a different way. I don't want the way of destruction. I want the way of everlasting life. Wow. Fascinated by a God who would give his life to have a relationship with me. Are you fascinated tonight? Are you fascinated? So fascinated that you say, wait a second. I've been overestimating my ability way too much. And I've been underestimating God's. So may my fascination bring less of me, but may it bring more of Him. Fascination by God. Tonight I'm fascinated by God. If not, I invite you to the Master's for the experience where you won't have to defend God anymore. But your defense is dropped and your fascination of Him becomes a witness that everyone seeking will become introduced to a God who they so greatly desire. Would you gather in tonight? Amen. Let's find a place more fascinated by God. Thank <laughs> you.